Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region bet between S Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, <coughs> ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. <clears throat> then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When was the last time you said thank you to someone? This morning. This morning? Good. Now let me rephrase the question just a little bit. <laughs> when was the last time you said thank you to someone and really meant it? This morning. Good. <laughs> I got a great church here though. <laughs> Whenever we express thanksgiving, and it genuinely comes from the heart, it becomes transformative to those around us. Jesus was once traveling to Jerusalem. He was somewhere along the border of Samaria and Galilee. There, he encountered ten men who were suffering from leprosy. Now these lepers knew enough to stay within their bounds. They weren't permitted to get but only so close to Jesus. And when they saw Jesus, they began to cry out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Then Jesus, seeing these ten who were suffering so much, told them to go and show themselves to the priest. It was necessary for them to do that because it is in that way they could re-enter society. As a leper, these men would have been cut off from society. They couldn't go to their own homes. They couldn't worship in the synagogue. They could have no contact with anyone outside of other lepers like themselves. And so, as they turned and went to see the priest, they were cleansed. Now one of them... A Samaritan, when he realized that he was cleansed, came back to Jesus, fell at his feet, and started praising God in a loud voice, giving thanks. It was an overwhelming display of joy. Now I'm confident that Jesus was very pleased that this one came back to say thanks. There's no question about that. But after hearing this one say thanks, 
he says, were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? Now, I've often wondered in my mind why the other nine failed to come back and thank Jesus. Maybe it's as simple as this. They just didn't have any fetchings up. They never were taught to say thank you. Or perhaps they were thankful, but they just didn't know how to express it. Perhaps they realized how fortunate they were, but they kept it to themselves. Somehow they failed to express the thanksgiving that was due to our Lord. You see, gratitude is something that has to be expressed, folks. It really does. Gratitude has to have an outlet, if you will. Ellsworth Callis once said, gratitude unexpressed is gratitude unfulfilled. And he's right. I've learned over the years <coughs> that when we say thank you, and it truly comes from the heart, it does become transformative in the lives of those who hear those words. If I were to come up to you and say thank you and genuinely mean that from the depths of my heart, thank you for the great job you're doing, chances are <clears throat> you're going to keep doing a great job and you're going to want all the more to do a great job. Isn't that right? Or if I were to come up to you and express thanksgiving for an act of kindness that you bestowed upon me, in all likelihood that would not be the last act of kindness I would see from you. Isn't that right? Unfortunately for many, all they ever hear about is the things that they didn't do or that they didn't do right. Saying thank you in even the smallest of things can go a long way toward encouraging someone. Can go a long way in helping them understand that they genuinely are appreciated. They can go a long way in helping someone to understand that they are loved. So these words are powerful, aren't they? Gratitude has to have an outlet or else it becomes unfulfilled. Secondly, <clears throat> learn to be specific in the things for which you are thankful for. Now sometimes I've prayed this prayer, Lord, I thank you for all the blessings of life. And there are times that's okay. But sometimes God does special things in our lives for which we ought to be thankful. Isn't that right? Yes. For example, if God has saved you from your sins, you ought to give thanks to God for the gift of salvation which is free to all. Or if in some way God has helped you as you were going through a time when you had to make a great decision in your life, maybe it involved the course of your life, you ought to give thanks to God for giving you guidance in that moment, in that time, giving you a way forward to be able to accomplish what you set out to do. This is Pledge Sunday. I think if God has blessed you in some way to be able to make a pledge this day, big or small, you ought to give thanks. You ought to give thanks that God has given you the ability to support the work and the ministries of this church. 
When we express gratitude in specific ways, we become more aware of just how blessed we are. When you start naming those things for which you are thankful, we truly do become more aware of how blessed we are. Because often in my own prayer life, I discover that as I name one thing, something else comes to mind. And when in doubt, it's okay to say, thank you for all the blessings of life. But, sometimes it's important that we just get specific because as we give thanks. We discover how much we are loved by God. We discover how much we are loved by our family. We discover how much we are loved by this family, the family of God, gathered here week after week as we worship God in spirit and truth. I don't know why the other nine didn't come back and say thank you to Jesus. It baffles me. But I can assure you of this much. The one who did would never forget what Jesus did in his life at that particular moment. He would never forget. And he would hold on to that the rest of his life. No doubt giving thanks many, many times over for that cleansing that allowed him to be reunited with his family and his friends, that allowed him to worship in the synagogue once again, that allowed him to praise God and walk freely down the street without having to yell the words unclean. Who is it that you need to say thank you to today? Who is it? And when was the last time you thanked God specifically for certain blessings, for things that have been going on in your life? Perhaps right now would be a great opportunity for us to say thanks to someone in this room. There may be someone in this very room for which you owe a debt of gratitude. Someone for which you desire more than anything else to say thank you. Now, I'm going to put someone on the spot and say something publicly right now. This isn't in the notes. <laughs> but I tell you, Martha, every time I hear you play, my heart is overflowing with joy. Thank you for your gift and sharing that with us. <clears throat> Today is a great day to give thanks to the Lord. In just a moment, we're going to be bringing our pledge cards forward. It's an act of love toward God. It's an act of thanksgiving that God has provided for us. If you forgot to bring yours, uh, ushers, do we have extras back there? I think we do. Uh, if anyone just wants to lift your hand, say, I would like to have a card, you can fill that out right now and uh, bring that uh, to the altar here in just a moment. <coughs> but remember, <clears throat> as we gather here this day, always give thanks. Those simple words are powerful and they can go a long way in helping to make a real difference in people's lives. Let's take a moment in silence and just reflect on what God has shown us this day. And then in a moment you'll be invited to come and present your pledges to God this day. Amen.